Welcome to the Game Keepers of Mossy Oak. Game keepers that enhance their native plants and even add back native species are seeing lots of benefit. For a variety of reasons, certain native species may not be found on your property. And with a little research into what would do best on your property, you can add them back and create food and bedding cover. In short, you can make your property better. Let's listen in. Our farm here in Kentucky has got a good mixture of both wood and open ground. Uh, we've got crop grounds and food plots and uh, we've got pastures, we've got native grasses and uh, it's just a really good mix of everything to keep deer and turkey here on the farm. I brought in uh, private lands wildlife biologist for the state of Kentucky, uh, Mr. Philip Sharp. And him and I have been working together for four or five years now on uh, different aspects of how to improve the property. I met Jason Purvis, uh, I guess, about four years ago uh, when, you know, they moved into Crittenden County and bought this farm here. Since they owned this land, he invited me to come out and we, we took a day and uh, drove over the landscape and discussed the multiple avenues for wildlife management. One of the things that we've been working on recently is creating cover and bedding structure for deer and turkey in the form of native grasses. We're continuing to work close together and, and try to develop an overall habitat management plan uh, that, that fits the needs of this property. One of the things that we do when we're converting different types of habitat in, back into native grasses is you'll take chemicals and spray it and then you'll wait probably at least maybe 20 days and uh, the grass will turn really brown. I mean, it'll, it'll kill it really good. So for any landowners at home that are wanting to create some good cover and habitat with native grasses, what are the simple steps that they need to do to get it done? How to change over, you know, say a typical pasture or even an old food plot area uh, into a native grass type habitat, something that's gonna hold more wildlife. Well, what I would recommend first is contact their local Fish and Wildlife Agency to see if they have a private lands program like Kentucky has. Contact your local biologist. And, and see if they can have a private lands person come out and visit you on the farm and evaluate what you have. You know, fescue is a tough plant to, to kill out, but we've got some chemicals like the Plateau that really, it's an amazepec, uh, it really does a wonderful job of taking that fescue out. And a lot of times your, your best chemical application is in the fall. You know, come in here, top clip it, uh, cut it for hay, right. and then spray it uh, with just a glyphosate chemical, possibly put some crossbow in it, just to get a good fall kill and let it stay dead. So if you're really, really planning in advance, go ahead and cut the field for hay, maybe, maybe brush hog it down, spray it real hard, and then when you come back to the spring, your next spraying is going to be more successful. And then, then you're looking You'll at You'll have a lot less vegetation growing to spray. Uh, that second spring, you know, that, that spring spraying is going to be very important. And then you're, you're ready to drill. Right. So basically we need to spray it and kill it down. And after we get a good kill, we're going to come in and drill it. And then we probably cannot expect to see a lot of results that year but the following year is when you're gonna start seeing your native grasses. Yeah. It's all according to the weather conditions. Right. If we have another year like uh, 2012, uh, the, the just horrible drought year, right. uh, you can't expect any plant the to do a rain, lot. The better. If you can get some moisture in June, July, and early August, you'll get your two, two and a half foot of growth this year. Yeah. Uh, and next year it's gonna do exactly what you want. <laughs> 